In the previous episodes, we saw how Gilgamesh and Enkidu defeated the mighty Humbaba and the Bowl of Heaven. As a result, gods decided that only one of them should survive. And unfortunately, Enkidu meets his end. Much to the agony of his dear friend Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh delivers a lament for Enkidu, in which he calls upon mountains, forests, fields, rivers, wild animals, and all of Uruk to mourn for his friend. Recalling their adventures together, Gilgamesh tears at his hair and clothes. In grief, he commissions a funerary statue and provides great gifts from his treasury to ensure that Enkidu has a favorable reception in the realm of the dead. A great banquet is held where the treasures are offered to the gods of the netherworld. Enkidu is buried in a riverbed, as in the corresponding Sumerian poem, The Death of Gilgamesh. Tablet 9 opens with Gilgamesh, roaming the wild, wearing animal skins, grieving for Enkidu. Having now become fearful of his own death, he decides to seek Adnapishtim, the man who survived the great flood, and learn the secret of eternal life. Among the few survivors of the great flood, Adnapishtim and his wife are the only humans to have been granted immortality by the gods. Gilgamesh crosses a mountain pass at night and encounters a pride of lions. Before sleeping, he prays for protection to the moon god Sin. Then, waking from an encouraging dream, he kills the lions and uses their skins for clothing. After a long and perilous journey, Gilgamesh arrives at the twin peaks of Mount Mashu, at the end of the earth. He comes across a tunnel, which no man has ever entered. The tunnel is guarded by two scorpion monsters, who appear to be a married couple. The husband, tries to dissuade Gilgamesh from passing through the tunnel, but the wife intervenes expresses sympathy for Gilgamesh, and allows his passage. He passes under the mountains, along the road of the sun. In complete darkness, he follows the road for twelve double hours, managing to complete the trip, before the sun catches up with him. He arrives at the Garden of the Gods, a paradise full of jewel-laden trees. Gilgamesh meets Siduri, a veiled tavern keeper, who assumes that he is a murderer, or thief, because of his disheveled appearance. Gilgamesh tells her, about the purpose of his journey. She attempts to dissuade him, from his quest, but sends him to Urshanabi, the ferryman, who will help him, cross the sea to Utnapishtim. Gilgamesh, out of spontaneous rage, destroys the stone charms, that Urshanabi, keeps with him, he tells him, his story, but when he asks for his help, Urshanabi informs him, that he has just destroyed the objects, that can help them, cross the waters of death, which are deadly to the touch. Urshanabi, instructs Gilgamesh, to cut down 120 trees, and fashion them into punting poles. When they reach the island, where Utnapishtim lives, Gilgamesh recounts his story, asking him for his help. Utnapishtim reprimands him, declaring that fighting the common fate of humans is futile, and diminishes life's joy. Gilgamesh observes, that Utnapishtim, seems no different from himself, and asks him, how he obtained his immortality. Utnapishtim, explains that the gods, 
decided to send a great flood to save Utnapishtim. The god Enki told him to build a boat. He gave him precise dimensions, and it was sealed with pitch and bitumen. His entire family went aboard together with his craftsmen and all the animals of the field. A violent storm then arose, which caused the terrified gods to retreat to the heavens. Ishtar lamented the wholesale destruction of humanity, and the other gods wept beside her. The storm lasted six days and nights, after which all the human beings turned to clay. Utnapishtim weeps when he sees the destruction. His boat lodges on a mountain, and he releases a dove, a swallow, and a raven. When the raven fails to return, he opens the ark and frees its inhabitants. Utnapishtim offers a sacrifice to the gods who smell the sweet savor and gather around. Ishtar vows that, just as she will, never forget the brilliant necklace that hangs around her neck. She will always remember this time, when Enlil arrives, angry that, there are survivors, she condemns him, for instigating the flood. Enki, also castigates him, for sending a disproportionate punishment. Enlil, blesses Utnapishtim, and his wife, and rewards them with eternal life. The main point seems to be that, when Enlil granted eternal life, it was a unique gift. As if to demonstrate this point, Utnapishtim challenges Gilgamesh to stay awake for six days and seven nights. Gilgamesh falls asleep, and Utnapishtim instructs his wife to bake a loaf of bread on each of the days he is asleep so that he cannot deny his failure, to keep awake. Gilgamesh, who is seeking to overcome death, cannot even conquer sleep. After instructing Urshanabi, the ferryman, to bathe Gilgamesh, and clothe him in royal robes, they depart for Uruk. As they were leaving, Utnapishtim's wife, asks her husband, to offer a parting gift, Utnapishtim tells Gilgamesh that, at the bottom of the sea, there lives a boxthorn-like plant that will make him young again. Gilgamesh, by binding stones to his feet so he can walk on the bottom, manages to obtain the plant. After traveling fifty leagues, they stopped for the night and the king wanted to bathe in the cool waters. A snake, being drawn in by the fragrance of the special plant, came out and carried the plant away. Gilgamesh, jumped to retrieve his prize, but the snake was too fast, as it slithered away. It sloughed off its skin as if becoming new again. A devastated Gilgamesh, sat down and cried at his failure, to maintain the plant. He sobbed to the ferryman, that all of his troubles had been for nothing. He had not gained anything to give him life. He had only helped the snake. He had done nothing for which, to leave his mark on the earth. The two men traveled on to Uruk. When they arrived at Uruk, Gilgamesh, sent Urshanabi, to the top of the wall to examine the structure. His wall, protected his city a large city with palm gardens, and low lands to feed the people, a temple to the goddess Ishtar, and an open area for the people. After all his travels, all his struggles, Gilgamesh, realized that his wall would be his mark.